Hello and welcome back to our colour picker tutorial. In the first episode we went through the process of creating the material for our colour wheel. Now in this next episode we're going to show you how to use a slider to help you determine which colour you want to pick in a widget. Let's jump in and start working on our widget. Okay, so we're going to create our widget. Uh, widget blueprint. And this is going to be a W colour wheel. Open this up. Now, one of the handy things that Widget Blueprint has as an input device is something called a synth slider. And once it loads up, I can show you where it is. And how to use it. Yeah. Okay. So we want a synth slider. Now, if you just type in slider, you'll see in there you've got synth 2D slider. That's the one we want to use. So we're going to drag that in and drop that into our scene here. And just so we can see what it looks like when it's square, we're going to change it from fill screen to custom screen and just change this to like 500 by 500. Okay, so when you select this, basically it's got a handle, which you can't see because it's white and it's white and white. But if I change the color of it, you'll see it. There you go, the handle there. And this is basically a two dimensional slider. You can drag it in X and Y values. It's all interactable by the player. So this is what we're going to use for our color wheel. So first thing we need to do is put our material on the color wheel itself. So let's go into the style here and you'll see the background image. And we're going to put our material that we made in the last episode into background image. Perfect. Next, I'm going to change my handle style. So I'm going to go to the a handle um, image and we're going to change the draw as to a rounded box and make it like a rounded circle there and I'm going to give it an outline too so I'm going to give it an outline value of one and we'll increase that opacity up so we can actually see it okay that'll do for now so there is our color widget now we obviously need to make this more interactable so we can actually get color from it and there's two things we want to do. One is um, set up the functions to handle getting the color from this thing, as well as we want to clamp it so that this picker can't go outside of this circle. So more on that in a moment. First of all, let's go get our color. So on the graph, the way this slider works is that there is a on value changed X and on value changed Y. Both of these update whenever your slider moves. So you just need one of them. Doesn't matter which one. And what we're going to do here is we need to get the value from the slider. So let's drag out the slider reference. And we're going to do get value. This gives you a two dimensional vector, so X and Y. Okay, so let's break this down. How this works. We need it to calculate the angle and also the distance to get our saturation. So the angle for our hue, distance for saturation. So the way circles work and how you get the angle of a position in a circle is we need to, if I just do a little demonstration here, there's our circle, there's our center point, and let's just, yeah, there you go. And um, let's say we want to get the angle towards this point over here. Now imagine that we've got a triangle shape here. So we got a line going across there, and a line going across there, and we've got the line going across there. So we've got a triangle, okay? And we want to find this angle here. We know the distance and position from the center point over to this point, okay? Because we know the the uh, adjacent value, and we know the opposite value, okay? And if you remember anything from uh, your math classes, uh, you have Sokotoa. I don't know if that's just something I just learned or something else everyone else learned. So you have sine, uh, so, uh, so I don't know if anyone else will remember this. This is something that's ingrained in my brain from school. But it means sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. In this case, we want to use tan because we know the opposite value and we know the adjacent value. Therefore, we can work out the angle value. 
Okay, so we know that. So that's what we're going to do. Hopefully, a bit of a uh, basic math there works out. Um, oh, another thing we have to be aware of is that the x and y value from the uh, the object is actually getting calculated from the top of our. Oh, let's do that again. There we go. That'd be better. Is actually getting calculated from the top here. So this is zero zero. This down here is one one. And obviously we want it to start from zero point five zero point five, which is the middle of the circle. So we have to offset all our calculations by zero point five to make this work. So when we get our value, let's first of all offset that by zero point five. So I'm going to take this and subtract from it zero point five. I then want to use my tan function. So I want to do a tan and we want to do two and in degrees. And we're doing a tan because we're doing the inverse of tan. Okay, it's just a way of doing the inverse uh, because we want to find out the angle. Okay. So with the uh, tan here, we're going to take in and split our values here. Now you can see we will match x and x together, y and y together. And that gives us the tan there. Now, when the degrees come through, Unreal is going to give you a value between minus 180 and 180. We don't want that. We want a value between 0 and 360. Now, the easy way of doing that is just using simply the clamp axis function. And what that does, it converts any sort of value between that range into 0 and 360. Okay, okay so that's the hue calculated from our value. So we can now drag that into HSV to RGB. And then it goes into H, hue. Next up is the distance for saturation. So we're going to get the vector here. And we're going to get distance between, and we'll put that in V2. V1 is going to be the center point, because that's where we're starting there. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And much like how we did it with the material, where we had to multiply by 2, we have to do the same here too. So we're going to multiply this by 2. And that's just because we're starting from the middle point as 0 0.5 rather than 0. So we multiply by 2. And it might be a good idea to clamp the value in case you go outside of the circle for whatever reason. And that'd be a saturation. Okay, and now this is going to give us the color. So now we can get the color from the material, from the wheel, the slider. So to make this useful for all of our widgets in the future, we're going to make an event dispatcher to make this work. Much like how the synth slider here has these dispatchers down here for on value change, we're doing our own one here. So on new event dispatcher, we're going to do on color changed. For some reason, my R key on my keyboard is a bit busted. See, so it does it, if it types it double or none at all. And this is going to output a color. So we're going to choose a linear color. And compile that. I'm going to drag that out and call that over here. The color has now changed. Okay. And to make this more visible for the user, I'm going to change the handle color here to match whatever color we've picked out. So we're going to drag out our slider and do set handle color. And that'd be the same color going into that. File and save. Okay, and that's the basics of this. Now there's more functionality we're going to add on to it in the next episode, but let's make a way so we can actually test and see this working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another widget to make use of this. Because the idea being is that you, we're making this widget as an input device uh, that we can include in any other widget we want. So we'll have in here one called color picker. And we'll do a horizontal box. And actually I'll, I'll wrap this with a canvas panel so we can easily just add it to the screen. Okay, horizontal box. And then we will search for our color wheel is and we're going to also add in a vertical box do that okay so let's now drag it out into our 
thing here, resize this a little bit. And I want my color wheel here to be a decent size. So I'm going to wrap that with a size box. Width and height. And we'll do 350 by 350. Follow that. And we'll tick size to content. Okay, there's our color wheel. Let's make this useful. And on the event construct, we're going to do get player controller. Set the input mode to UI only and show mouse cursor. Boom. And I'm just going to add it to the screen on the level blueprint, just a way to demonstrate and show it working. So I'm going to go begin play, create widget, damn R key. And we're going to choose our color picker and just add it to the view. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to play it. There's my color picker. And if I click and drag the circle, ah, I forgot one thing. I think we did test it. I forgot to put in here in V value one. That's your brightness value. So. Zero means it's completely dark. But as you can see, as I drag it around, the color of the handle is changing based upon whereabouts my mouse is going. Okay. So one thing I want to do is stop it from going outside of the circle and clamp it to that circle shape. Okay. So the way we do that is by utilizing the tick on our color wheel. So let's go to our color wheel. And we'll get rid of those two and just get the tick. And what we're going to do is override the value of our slider based upon where the current value actually is. So we're going to do set value. And that will help us clamp it. And first thing we're going to do is we need to work out whether or not uh, the current selection that we're trying to do is inside the circle. If it's inside the circle, great, keep it as is. Otherwise, we want to clamp the circle. So we need to work out that so let's go ahead and let's make a uh, function to help us with this and we'll do get angle and that's going to do basically what we've got down here really clamp that there copy that and put that in there return node yeah. and we want to make it a pure function now we've got this thing here, which will just output the angle of wherever we are in the circle. Okay. Next up, we need to get that angle and we want to calculate where it should be. Um, but actually, before we do that, let's work out whether or not we're inside the radius. Which is pretty simple to do because we've really done something similar to this where we are working at distance. So is in radius. And this is going to get the distance. So this bottom part here, we're going to take, uh, actually, we just need that bit. We don't need to get the clamps or anything like that. And we're just seeing if this value here, distance beneath, is actually less than 0 0.5. And return that value. We'll make that pure. Okay, so now we've got these two functions to help us work out what we need to do. Okay, and so as I said, we're going to change the value. So we just split, oh, split that value. There you go. And on X here, we're going to do select float. And it is in radius, it's going to go into here. Now, if it's true and it is in radius, fine. We can just use the value as is. So I'm going to get that slider, get the value. And split it. And X will just go into there. However, B is where it gets a little bit more tricky. So what we want to do with B is we actually want to uh, work out where the edge of that circle is. So we know the center point. We know the angle. We know we need to now work out how far away we are going. And this comes back down to our little triangle here. If we need to work out, say, uh, 
uh, this point here on the circle, the edge of the circle, I need to know this line, this distance, okay? And work out that coordinate. So to do that, I need to um, know a couple of things. First of all, I need to know uh, the angle. So I know the angle. I mean, is that a triangle there? Let's just call it a little triangle. So I know this angle. And I want to put that into a, uh, to work out the position, okay? And to work out that over there, hypotenuse, Sokotoa, I know the adjacent value of x. I'm working at x here. So I know, I'm going to work out how far away the x, this x value is here. I know this and I know the hypotenuse. And if I know the angle and I know the hypotenuse, I can work out the cosine to get this adjacent value. So I'm going to take this, do cosine degrees. When you put an angle into the cosine, you want to multiply that by the range, the hypotenuse. In this case, it's going to be 0.5 because that's how the radius of our circle is. And that's going to work out that. But don't forget, our center point is in the middle of the circle. So we do need to offset that by 0.5 to make that work. Remember, it's calculating the value of 0 0.5 from, um, from 0, 0, from the top left. Okay, and that'll go into there. Now, I'm going to copy all of this again. I'm going to just do another set float for y. But this time, rather than cosine, we'll be using sine because we want to work out this angle. Okay, that angle is worked out because we know the angle and hypotenuse. That's the opposite angle. That's the opposite side. And that is sine s o h. At sine opposite hypotenuse. So we get the angle sine d. And then it's the same as what we've got up here. Multiply by the hypotenuse length, 0.5. Add it by the offset, 0.5. And then put that into your B there. And A is going to be the value as is. And that's it. It will now clamp to that circle. So as you can see, it's redone it. And if I drag it around, I can't drag it outside of my circle here. Brilliant. There you go. That's the color wheel picker widget basically there. Uh, we're almost done. What we're going to do in the next episode is add more functionality to this so you can actually get and set information to the color wheel, make it more useful for your other widgets that you're going to have in your game. So you can watch the next part right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. And once again, if you do want the project files for this, you can get them as a gold Patreon subscriber over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley as well. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you in the next part. Bye, one.